Hello and welcome to our first Gretel tutorial. In this video we will be running a simple linear regression example as we walk through the basic features of this software. This video will start by describing what is Gretel. We will then open a data file and proceed to examine this data file, look at what variables it has and run some descriptive statistics. We will then run a simple linear regression model and use the results from this model from the regression output to construct confidence intervals and also to visualize them. So let's start talking about what is Gretel. Gretel is an open source statistical package used mainly for econometrics. Econometrics is the science or field of knowledge that analyzes data with statistical models to test hypotheses and reach conclusions, very commonly used in research. Gretel itself, the name, is an acronym for GNU, which is an open source license, Regression Econometrics and Time Series Library. We will also be doing some time series in our work. In regards to its technical characteristics, it is written in C and can be integrated with many other software, including R, which is a very powerful statistical package. If you want to learn more about the software and also download it, you can go to SourceForge, which is a very common source for open source software. Let's start opening a data file. The file we will be using in this example is called consumption.csv and is available on the course website. CSV stands for comma separated values and in the end this is nothing more than a text file. Let's see how this text file looks on a text editor. In a text editor, the equivalent of notepad for Windows users, what we would see is nothing more than a file that has one line per row in the data file and the different columns in the data file are going to be separated by commas. We see that the first row in this case, the first line, has the name of the columns which are going to be income and consumption. If we open this in Excel, you can see that Excel automatically sets it up as a table. It recognizes CSV files are used to represent tables. The tables has the two columns and 40 rows full of data for our 40 observations. But we're not interested in opening this in Excel. We're interested in opening it in Gretel. So let's go to Gretel. Gretel is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. In this case, I'm running it from a Mac. Yet the interface is going to be pretty much identical across the different platforms. If you have issues with the fonts, meaning that the letters are all too small, you can come to Tools, Preferences, and change the menu font or the fixed font. The fixed font is the one we're going to see to observe different outputs throughout Gretel. We want to open a data file. We click on File, Open Data, User File. Note that Gretel tries to open a .gdt file, which is the default format for Gretel data files. However, our file says CSV. So from the options, we choose CSV, and now we observe and can either double click or select and click open our consumption.csv file. The prompt raised by Gretel asks us if the data we're opening should have a time series interpretation, which in this case it doesn't, we're opening a cross-sectional data set, or a panel interpretation. We can ignore this prompt and click no. The other output reports us what was opened, and you can see that we have two columns, two variables, and 41 lines in the text file. We can also ignore this output. What Gretel shows us now is the list of variables in the dataset. There's generally going to be a constant term in here, and we see that income and consumption are two variables. Let's start by visualizing the content of these variables. We can select both variables by using shift and selecting the ones we want to observe. And then we come to data, display values. And you can see what we are looking at here is the content of the 40 observations. Gretel automatically numbers the observations from one to 40 and knows the names of the two columns. In rare cases, we might want to edit the data, which we can also do here by simply clicking Edit Values. We could, for example, change this 105 for a 100, 
but I don't want to do it, so I'm going to leave it as it was. We can also observe descriptive statistics. These are in the View menu under Summary Statistics. We're going to see the summary of both variables, income and consumption. So on the right-hand side, we indicate to Gretel what variables we want to see. If I did not want to see consumption, I could bring it back. But in this case, I want to bring it back in and click OK. The output shows us the mean values for income and consumption, 98.35 and 133. The median values, minimum values, maximum values, standard deviation, and also the percentiles. This is going to be useful to spot out outliers. Let's now proceed to run our model. Our model is ran by an estimation method called ordinary least squares, which is available here under the model section. By least squares, we're meaning that we're trying to minimize or having the least possible squared errors in our regressions, but that's more technical than what we want to do. We can click here on model or also there's a beta in the lower part of the screen that runs the OLS model. It has a beta hat signifying that we want to find the estimates for the beta coefficients in our linear regression model. I'm going to click here. In this very basic model, we will be modeling how different levels of families' income drive consumption. So consumption is going to be our dependent variable, something that will depend on something else. Meanwhile, income is going to be one of our regressors or independent variables. We see that our model is going to have a dependent variable, consumption, an independent variable, income, and also a constant term for the intercept. Once we have set it up, we click OK. What we observe now is very standard statistical output for a linear regression. We have the coefficients, both for the constant term as the slope, which is the coefficient for income. We have their standard errors. We have their p-values. And more broadly, we also have some statistics about the model's performance. In this regard, we have the r-squared, we have the standard error of the regression, the adjusted r-squared, and also the Ikaikin criteria, or AIC, which we will be using to compare models later on. Once we have our coefficients, remember we are not interested in having point estimates, but rather confidence intervals of the coefficients, and Gretzel can compute these automatically. If we click on Analysis and click then on Confidence Interval for Coefficients, Gretel is now showing us the confidence interval for both the constant term and the income coefficient. We don't care about the constant in this case, and we observe that the point estimate of the coefficient for income is 0.85. Meanwhile, the confidence interval goes from 0.75 to 0.95. To compute the confidence interval, Gretel has not added and subtracted exactly two times the standard error of the slope coefficient, which was 0.0506. Rather, it computed t-statistic and multiplied that standard error by 2.024. However, we're not going to be discussing in this course the reason why we use a t-statistic rather than just twice the standard error. For managerial purposes, using a confidence interval computed with twice the standard error and not 2.024 is going to be good enough for us. We can also ask Gretel, what is the predicted consumption for every single of the 40 observations in the dataset. To do this, we come to Analysis and we ask Gretel to display the actual value, the fitted value, which would be the predicted value of the dependent variable, in this case consumption, for each of the observations, and the residual, which is the error term, how far the fitted value is from the actual value. So we see that the first observation, for example, had a consumption of 154, the predicted consumption of this one is 150.61, and the difference between the two is 3.39. What our estimation procedures have tried to do is to minimize these residuals, the distances between the real consumption and the predicted consumption. Talking about prediction, we can also generate forecasts. And in this case, what we will do is simply forecast the consumption for the 40 observations we have and at the same time draw and quantify 
a 95 confidence interval for this observation. We use the default options and click OK. We first see a data output that has the same columns we had before. The real consumption, the estimated consumption or prediction, the standard error, and the 95 confidence interval for each of these observations. We can also observe this very nice plot that shows several things. The red dots are a scatter plot with the income and consumption of each of the 40 observations. The blue line represents the fitted values, the point estimates of our predictions. However, we will be more generally interested in the confidence interval, which in this case is represented by the green lines, and you can see the upper and lower bounds of the 95 confidence interval for our forecast. Thank you.